Hello everyone, and welcome back. So, this time before I move everything, I'm going to ask you, is this a frame, or is this a machine? What do you think? What do you think? Well, it doesn't say, actually. But, my question for you is this. Um, the structural thing that we're actually looking at, not this, you know, part right here. Does this part move? The answer is no, that's a frame. Um, you could say, well, what about all these, this, you know, motor right here? Those are all more or less an external force acting on my frame. What I care about, the structural integrity of it, is this part right here. These are the real rigid parts. When you have rigid parts that can move at their joints, rotate some way, then you usually have a machine. So I would consider this a frame. Let me move this over to the side. There we go. So what you're going to do right now is you're going to try to find the force in the cable at the winch mode of W and the horizontal and vertical components of pin reactions at A, B, C, and D. Woo! Woo! That's a whole lot to do. Um, luckily for us, there might be a two-force member here to make it easier. Just maybe. So, before I send you off into the wild to do this on your own, here's your plan. Draw free by a diagram of all the frames, members, and pulleys. You're like, wait a minute, pulleys? Yes, the pulleys, too. And apply your equation to equilibrium and solve for the unknowns. Okay. So, with that in mind, you can do this. Go off. Try it. And in three, two, one... You have returned. You've done the example, hopefully. Um, and now we're going to go over it together. So like I said, we have to draw free by diagrams of pretty much everything. It takes a while, but it's worth it. So first off, point E. You might be wondering, like, why do we even care about point E? Well, it's because we care about the tension in this rope. That is an important aspect of this. And what we can see is that the tension in the rope there's two ropes more or less pulling up, even though it's your one rope, but with how it works, there's more or less two ropes pulling up, holding this. And there's 700 pounds pulling down. So if I solve this, I only have some of the forces in the Y, what I get is that the tension in the rope must be equal to 350 pounds. Okay. Now, like, wait a second, how do we know this already? Well, that tension doesn't change. Unless we're saying that these are friction, like there's friction in these pulleys. If they're smooth pulleys, there's no friction. That tension will stay the same all the way through the rope. Okay. Then right here at point C with that first pulley, you see we have 350 pounds pulling down, 350 pounds pulling directly to the left, which means that I have to have 350 pounds pushing up on the pulley, and 350 pounds pushing to the right on the pulley from the support in order to solve. Seems too easy, doesn't it? But it's really that simple sometimes. So if we had an angle or something like we do with this one, okay, it's not quite as nice, but it's not terrible. Um, because even in this case, you can see that this 350 pounds is the only force in the y direction along with by. So I don't have to do a system of equations. I can just do it one at a time. So, we do some of the forces in the Y first. I would do this one first, just because it's going to make it a lot easier. Um, you can solve for BY then. And, we do some of the forces in the X. Solve for that. What we get is that BY is 303.1 pounds, and BX is 175 pounds. Now, let's look at right here. 350 sine 30 and 350 cosine 30, because this does get people confused. My advice to you is if you have a free body diagram, and the arrow is kind of small and hard to see, Redraw it just a little bit bigger. This is slightly exaggerated. And also make sure that you draw your arrows for the components. Now one of these is the X component, one of these is the Y, and the angle that's given to you is up here. Okay, and this number right here is 350. Now what you can see is if we want the X component, well that is opposite 30 degrees. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine of 30. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine of 30. So you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you draw these free body diagrams and that you use the correct um, trigonometric function. 
because in cases like this, it's not going to be the one that you necessarily think it should be. You get pretty used to cosine being um, x and sine being y because that's how it is broken up a lot of times, but not always. So be careful. Okay, now with that, we have all the forces at C. We have the forces at B, um, and we can put these into a free body diagram. Now, there's something I really want you to notice here. Okay, look at the direction of these arrows. Down to the left, down to the right. Over here, though, we had left and up, and up and right. It's opposite, okay? The directions are opposite. Now you might be wondering, well, why are they opposite? Um, and this is a hard thing to remember. But you have to think about it this way. What you're seeing here is not the force that this pulley is exerting on something else. You're seeing the force that something else is exerting on this pulley to keep it stationary. You have to remember that. So if something is exerting a force to the right on this pulley, then the pulley is exerting a force to the left on whatever that object is. And that is why everything switches. You have to remember that, okay? You have to think about that because that is probably the hardest aspect of working with machines and frames because it will flip around on you. Okay, now with this, we have you know, three things left to go um, and we have three equations. So we should be able to solve. My advice is, hmm, take some of those around point A first. You can solve for tension BD. And then you can do some of the forces in the x or the y direction fairly simply. So I'm guessing that's what they probably did. They did. So they had to break TBD into its um, components. Um, and honestly, with 45 degrees, it doesn't really matter what function you use. Okay, it's on a timer, apparently. Um, but just make sure we go through this again. 45 degrees right here. If I want, there you go. This is the y component. This is the x component. Um, since I'm taking the moment around a, the x component doesn't do anything because its line of action would go through a. Only the y component matters. Horizontal distance, vertical force. So 45 degrees is in this corner. The side that is opposite that corner is y. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine of theta. That's why we use sine of 45 right here. But technically, cosine of 45 is the same thing. If it had been any other angle, we wouldn't have had that. Um, and then I add in all my other moments. So 303.1 times 4, 700 times 8, and I solve. So the tension in BD is 2,400 pounds. Ooh, that's a lot of tension. You have to think about this. We only had a 700-pound force right here, and that's 2,400 pounds right there. That moment arm, it really does something to increase the force. Um, and then we have to send the forces in the x direction, so we get ax. Once again, we have the opposite component. We had sine before, but now we're having the cosine component because that's adjacent over hypotenuse. And we get that ax 1880. And we bring back our y component to solve for a y, which is negative 700. Okay. So with that, we have solved everything. We've gotten all of our forces done. And this problem is done. So I hope this helps you. It's a little bit harder problem. And the biggest thing for you right now is to remember that it switches, okay? When you go from one free body diagram to the next, if they are connected, then the forces that are connecting them are in opposite directions. From one, it's gonna be up to the left. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to think about how this is going to look to you. Up into the right, there we go. That one, it'll be down into the left. Okay, they're going to be opposite because that's how they affect each other. It's kind of like arrows. You can see these two arrows pointing at each other. Give you a little bit better idea. Um, so just remember that, okay? That's the most important detail from this problem. So I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.